Tell me, Jesus. Okay, so as I was growing up, I didn't grow up with my dad. And my mom was always at work. She was a single mom trying to raise me. And I would say I pretty much raised myself. I mean, God, and she was there, obviously, but just like the ways of growing up and the ways of thinking, there were not, there were not ways that should be taught. So, growing up in a Hispanic household, you know, you watch a lot of novelas. And I just remember, like, growing up and just always watching them, always, like, in the nighttime, like, that's what you know, his, most of the Hispanic people do. They turn on like the novelas. I think that they start at seven and then they have an eight and then they have a nine. And then the later they get, the worse they get. And I don't know, cause I don't, I haven't watched TV in a long time. I don't know like how it is now. But when I was younger, I learned a lot of bad examples from them. I learned sensuality from them I learned that if you wanted to get a man you you can get him by dressing provocative and dressing sexy and in the novella it was always like the pretty one got to keep the guy and then I remember being like around 13 years old and I took my mom's debit card and I went across the street. I was like from third from like my life from like 13 and a half I was like a little girl and then 13 and a half I started like developing and I started making bad friendships in middle school and then I started shifting and changing my body started changing and I started changing and though I wasn't like I started being not a little girl anymore and I took my mom's debit card and I went across the street. I went to a fashion store and I bought myself like little black jean shorts. And I could think it was like a kind of looked like a soccer player shirt. It was like short, midriff, um, white shirt. And it had like black checkers like this. And, and there was this guy in the apartments that I lived in and I was 13 and a half. And I knew that if I were to dress inappropriate and walk by his apartment, I knew that eventually he would, um, I knew that he would eventually, um, come out of his apartment. So I walked by once and I used to push my little sister cause my little sister was born when I was 13 and I used to get the stroller and I, that was like my, well not my excuse, I used to take her but it was my excuse to pass by his house. And I went one time and maybe his window, his door was closed, but nothing happened. And then like I went by like another time, maybe like a week later. And then sure enough, like I went, I hit the corner, he lived in the corner. I was going back towards my apartments. We lived in the second floor. So I used to like kind of go, it was like a kind of like, look like a square upstairs. And then I went to his corner and then sure enough, like a second later, um, he ran after me and he would like ask me for my number and at that time I was um I was a little girl I didn't even know what I was doing I knew that if I can get his attention but I didn't know the mess I was getting myself into and that was pretty much the beginning of my sensuality years and how I was how I was taught the power of your body the power of clothing and how it attracts so much attention from everybody and I remember from that point on I started noticing like the power it had and I just started buying more clothes I would take my mom's debit card and I would go buy more stuff and dressing like that before I started dressing like that nobody like nobody wanted to talk to me Nobody did anything like to get my attention, but after I started dressing like that, I would go across the street 
and and um, the guys would just be like following me like all over. I couldn't even like cross the street, and they were like, "Hey, you know, can I get your number?" And I was like, "Oh well," like so excited because nobody ever like I guess I wanted the attention of a guy and. I didn't have a dad so it was just like oh, okay so like this is this is how you do it this is how you get like men's attention and I was naive and I was dumb but in my naive ways I knew how I can get like man's man's attention and has my journey you know walking with the Lord obviously like you know I had to change he started like changing me and like the way that I dressed and stuff like that started changing the day I gave my life to the Lord but that's a different story but um I just remember like you know as I started like you know going to churches and 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 stuff like that I, w I would see like you know young ladies like parents would bring their young ladies to the church and they would be wearing like spaghetti straps and like short tops or like if they do a certain movement like you can see their belly button they'd be wearing like jeans and then like I didn't understand like as being like a new Christian I I didn't understand why a mom would allow her daughter to dress like that to church it just it didn't make sense to me and I I still don't understand it but I was just like okay like I would see it it would grieve my spirit but then you know when church was over I would you know just like you know go on about my day and just you know you know just mind my business and you know I was just like oh you know I didn't really pay like a second thought about it I just knew that I wasn't right but I just thought well there's nothing I can do because that's their daughter and like I can't change them so I would just you know get in my car you know go about my day and you know just forget about about it and then I remember like, you know, after I gave my life to the Lord, like it took me, um, like I had dresses and not even that long ago, like two years ago, like not that I wore them or anything. I had them put away in a, for a long time. Like, you know, I had clothes and like, you know, short stuff that I used to wear before inappropriate, horrible stuff. And, um, and about two years ago, I would put everything on offer up. I would put like my heels and like dresses and skirts. And I even had a bunch of Halloween costumes that were like, you know, inappropriate. And I wanted to make money off of the stuff I had. And then after that, I, nothing would sell. And I would just like, I would put up like, you know, bathing suits or something. And then they wouldn't sell. And then out there, I was just like, glory, like, you know, I need the money. Why are you not letting me? why isn't this stuff selling like it's cute i'm like it's like five dollars why isn't it like why isn't it being sold and then after that um so i just didn't know and i was like okay well like you know if the lord wants me to you, you know the lord will provide if he's not allowing me to sell these stuff and, and that was it so i just didn't pay any attention to that either and then um about two years ago the lord started showing me the pain the pain and how he's so concerned about the way that we dress and it was just like I just he started showing me and it was just like very sad and I was just like well like Lord what do you want me to do with this like what do you expect for me to do with all this information and then he just, you know, told me, if you don't like something, do something about it. And I was like, okay. And, you know, I was going to churches and stuff like that. Um, I just see, like, the effect that it has. Um, for example, I was at this church. And everybody at this church dressed proper. Everybody, you know, all the women dressed proper they wear their dresses and they wear their skirts and then you know men dressed up everybody would like get dressed up for church very nice but there was a young lady and um she wore wear jeans and i think her parents must have been where well, they were pastors friends so she sat in the first row with the pastors 
and her, the young lady was pastor's daughter friend and i remember like um a few weeks um they had a guest speaker and this man he was you know he started talking about how we should dress to church and how it's an honor to go to church and he said you know wearing jeans to church is unacceptable then he said like and it shouldn't happen he's like that he you know that at his church people he doesn't allow people to wear jeans and um and then you know he gave the example and he the example was if you were to go meet the president what would you wear he's like would you wear jeans to meet the president he's like you're coming to meet the king the king of kings and the lord of lords He's like, you dress up like you're coming to see God. And then after that, I was just like, it's so true. Like, you know, for any other event, we would like say like, oh, I want to go and buy this nice thing and stuff like that. But yet to the house of God, we, we don't see it like we're going to honor a person. So then I was just like, oh, okay. Like, you know, he's bringing it up. He probably saw the young lady in the front that, you know, was wearing the jeans and he thought to brought it up because she was the only one that was wearing the jeans. So, I mean, the weekend after she, she didn't wear jeans, two weeks after she went back and, you know, she was wearing the jeans again. And then after that, um, so worship was going on and, you know, they have the, the TV in the front with the words and stuff like that. So I'm like worshiping and stuff. I'm like, you know, reading the, the words and singing the songs. And then after that, the Lord just turns my eyes to the guy that's in the second row. She was in the first row. There was a guy in the second row. And he is next to his wife. And during worship, he can't even concentrate because he's looking at her. But and it's just so sad I was like Jesus like why would you show me this like what am I gonna do with this information and I just like started crying during worship and I'm like you know I don't know what to do because it was just like so new and I didn't understand it and I knew he was showing me but I just didn't know what to do with that information so you know hey I told me if you don't like something then do something about it so I was like okay you know I prayed about it two days later I called the church and I told them what I saw I just said you know the young lady she wears really tight jeans and you know it's it's causing you know distraction to the guy in the back that's married and he's like a pastor that prays for the people at the end for salvation and I said and I said you know I just wanted to let you know and see you know what you know I mean I gave it over to him because I am not the pastor there so I can't do anything about it and then, I mean I continued to go there for a while she continued to wear the jeans nothing changed and I just you know I don't go there no more so I don't know what happened but you know while I was there things didn't change she continued to dress like that I don't know if it was brought up to her attention or not and then like recently I went to another I went to another um to go see this lady speak and um as she's like speaking and um she like introduces her niece and then she's like, you know, meet my niece, she's gonna be doing this and this and this and she starts talking about what her niece is doing and then her niece comes up and we, it was an outdoor service so as her niece comes up you know she's like in the middle of the tent and then you know we're all outside we're all surrounded and she's wearing really 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 tight jeans and you know since the lord has made me aware like i just like i just i'm just like i can notice like the effect that it has on the men and on the woman and then i just look um I look at the guy that's sitting in front of me with his wife and then he's just like this he can't even like look up because her pants were so tight that you can see like every tiny little curve and then after that I, I just like I I don't understand it like 
how do you let your knees come out just like that at the house of God so that was example number two you know church is supposed to be a safe heaven for the men and then the Lord started showing me that the reason why I didn't sell anything was because if he doesn't want me to dress like that neither does he doesn't want any of his other daughters like that and then I understood that the clothes needed to be in the trash and to make sure that nobody picked it up I got scissors and I cut it up into little pieces and I threw it away and before like I didn't know like what a big problem it was and tell you you know and tell you love somebody who has the problem of lust <laughs> and then their problem becomes your problem <laughs> and it's no longer their problem but your problem And it's just so sad because sometimes I think women don't realize the effect that it has on men. You know, some of them are deep, deep, deep in their problem. Some of them are trying to fight it. And it makes it hard when women dress like that all over the place. And it's just... It's so hard I mean, because it's all over the place. It's on the freeways. It's on the billboards It's at the grocery store. It's in the magazine stands It's with the girls. I mean when you go to the grocery store in summertime It gets worse and You know The Lord has really been showing me because I've been asking him like what what is this Lord and the Lord has been really you know showing me the spirit behind this like the spirit behind it the spirit of why you would want to attract the attention like that why you would want to you know engage men's eyes to look at you and it's um the Jezebel spirit uses the body to kind of like grab them, grab their attention, you know, to have them, you know, and when we dress like that as women, you're, you're dressing like that and you're getting the attention to yourself and you're taking it away from the Lord because when you dress like that and it's, it's not a, it's not like a godly apparel like a worldly apparel and then men are enticed they're like and like everything they just kind of like you know their eyes and their heart and their mind the ones that have problems they just focus on that and you take away the glory from God because when a man looks at us he shouldn't be thinking about our body he should be thinking about Christ when somebody looks at us they should be looking at Jesus not looking at the flesh see the Bible says that Jezebel causes men to commit fornication and let's read what the Bible says Okay, and let's and let's see um let's see what the Bible says and let's see what the Lord says. Uh, the Bible says in Revelations two eighteen it says the corrupt church and to the angel of the church and Titeria Ty writes these things says the Son of God and look at look at what God is saying and look at the description of God. 
and how he's judging Jezebel. Says these things that says the Son of God, who has eyes like flame of fire. So God's eyes flame of fire is what you know judging. And his feet like brass. Says, I know your works, your love, service, faith, and your patience. And for your works, the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. Because you allow that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce. So that's Jezebel's job. She, to teach and seduce. So when a woman dresses provocative and she's trying to seduce, you're working under the Jezebel spirit. And you're allowing the enemy to use your body to seduce men. It says, to Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. See, when a man looks at a woman with lust... The Bible says that when you look at a woman with lust, it says that you have committed adultery with her. So just think about like the action that's happening. It's talking about the man is committing adultery with her, with Jezebel. Because if that woman is under the Jezebel spirit, that's the spirit that he is committing fornication with. But if a man is enticed to a woman that has a lustful spirit, that means that he himself is working under that lustful spirit himself. So he has lust in his heart. So he's enticed to these lustful women. Because not every man is enticed to lustful women. When a man's heart has changed, he's no longer enticed by that. But if a man has a lustful problem in his heart and he sees a lustful woman, then it's like a magnet. And it grabs his attention and it grabs him and he's enticed by it. As he agrees to her offers, he begins to sleep with her and begins to commit spiritual idolatry. I've seen times at churches where pastors are trying to rebuke the spirit of lust from a man and the spirit doesn't the spirit doesn't go the spirit the spirit doesn't move and the reason why that is is because that man has to be willingly laid down that lust in his heart nobody can take it away from him he he has come under it himself and he has to surrender that only the Lord can take away that that lustful spirit from him only the Lord can correct it you know because that has become an idol in his heart an idol he has he has opened his heart to that idol and we have to lay down our idols and let the Lord and surrender it to the Lord so he can be able to get rid of that idol that we have in our hearts you can't rebuke it. The person has to lay it down. See, it's such a, such a, such a, such like a strong, like a, such a strong thing, um, that people might or minor not, might not realize it, but it affects people all around. When a woman walks into a room that is dressed seductive, you're not only affecting the man, but you're affecting the woman that that man is with. 
because we as women know the power of our bodies. We know when we stand in front of a mirror and we know what things we can get to get attention. So it is the other woman that's with that man. When you, you're around that, you know exactly what is going on. And to God, it's a grave, it's a, it's a big thing. It's not like a little thing like, you know, it's just close. It's a big deal. And he takes it very, very, very serious. See, the Bible says, But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, and when a woman dresses like that, when you dress provocative, you know, when we, when we, when we choose to dress provocative, you know, we have to realize that it's a stumbling block to our brothers. And the Lord says that we have to love our brothers more than we love ourselves. And loving our brothers means laying down our life. And I know that sometimes as women we want to look cute. But if it's going to affect our brother, we got to put it down. we got to not wear it. we got to say no thank you. This is what Jesus says. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him if a milestone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. And you know, the rest of it says, if your, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It would be better for you to enter into live main rather than having two hands to go to hell and then the fire that it shall be quenched forever. And it's the same thing. I mean, if your body causes you to sin, cut it off. I mean, put it away. Like, you know, we, we have to know and we have to have boundaries. And, you know... Jesus is very clear about what he expects from us. We have to grow. We have to mature. You know, the Bible says when I was a child, I thought as a child. But then I put childish things away. And as we grow in God, we need to be aware of our actions and everything that we do. You know, and you know, God gives warning of this um, in Revelations when you continue to read. And it says, Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet, to teach and seduce my servants, to commit sexual immorality, and to eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to repent her sexual immorality, and she did not. See, the Lord is giving us time to repent. But it says that she did not repent. You know, sometimes I, I hear people saying like, I can wear whatever I want to my body. And you could wear whatever you want and it is your body. But there's consequences to our actions. The Bible says, and uh, Revelation 2, 22, Indeed, I will cast her into a sickbed, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulations, unless they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children. I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the mind and the hearts. And I will give to each one according to your works, See, the Lord is always looking at our hearts and our intent and why we're doing the things that we're doing. We don't fool God. God knows everything. God knows our little bitty hearts and our thoughts and the reason why we do things. And God is good. He forgives us. Well, God is also just... Okay, I'm going to 
gonna close on with this prayer from David. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of Leave me in the way everlasting. I'm going to read it again. Revelation, I know, Psalms 139 verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if there's any wicked way in me. And lead me in the everlasting. Lead me in the way everlasting. So I'm going to go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for your word, Father God. We thank you for speaking, Father God. We thank you for speaking into our hearts, Father God. Try us, oh God, and see if there's any wicked thing in our hearts, Father God. Expose them, Father God, in the name of Jesus and change us, Father God. We surrender our hearts to you, Father God. Surrender our lives to you, precious King, Father God. Forgive us, O Lord, for wanting attention, Father God, from man and from women, Father God. The only attention that we need is the attention of you, God. We are the apple of your eye, Lord. We ask for forgiveness if we've ever been a stumbling block to anybody else, Father God. I pray, Father God, that you would change our hearts, Father God, that you would have grace and mercy, Father God, that you would protect us and you would surround us with your love, Father God. I thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you for your power to transform us, Father God. Pray, Father God, for every person that's watching, Father God. Touch their hearts, Lord. And I also pray, Father God, for the people, Father God, that know somebody or them themselves are, are dealing with the spirit of lust, Father God. I pray, Father God, that they will humble themselves under the mighty power of God. I pray that they will lay down their idols, Father God. I pray, Father God, that I will lay down my idols, Father God. Father God, take over, Jesus. We need you. Take over, God. Cleanse our hearts, Father God. Let us lift up holy hands before you, Father God. Take away the desires, Father God, to sin. Remove it from us, Father God. Create in me a new heart, Father God. Create in us a new heart. Give us a new heart, Father God, the way you did to Samuel. We're open. We're desperate, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.